Hello and very welcome everyone to this particular session of the current affairs. Today we are going to learn the current affairs for 3rd of August. So let's start and let's see that what are the things that we need to learn from this day. So these are the topics we are going to cover like international news, banking and finance, defense, science and tech, sports, important is ranks and reports, summit, awards, appointments and resignation. And at last we will summarize that what are the things we are going to learn. The images used in our slide deck are for educational purpose only. We respect the intellectual property rights of the original creators and owners of these images. If you are the owner of any of the images used in this deck and have any concerns or issues, please, please contact us at sathi at the rate iit.kc.in and we shall remove the images. So the first news that we have today is the highlights of visit of David Lamy MP, UK Foreign Secretary to India. So remember the name David Lamy MP. He is the Secretary of State for Foreign Commonwealth and Development Affairs of the UK. Like the Finance Secretary we have. So he is the basically the Secretary of the State of this particular <coughs> ministry. Uh, that is the Finance Ministry in United Kingdom. So he is the Foreign Secretary. Sorry. He is the Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom. And paid on official visit to India from 25th to 24th to 25th of July. The visit marked his first official trip to India as UK Foreign Secretary after Labour's party victory in the UK general elections. So this is his first particular visit. 24th of July, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar from our side held a bilateral meeting with David Lamy, who is the U uh, External Affairs Secretary or the Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom. India and UK launched new technology security initiative aimed to boosting economic growth and strengthening collaboration between the two countries. So during this meeting, they have talked about the type of security initiatives that are being developed between the India and the United Kingdom. And for that purpose, this collaboration was done. Kura Kao joins the sixth associate members of CARICOM. So recently, Cura Cow has become the sixth associated member of the Caribbean community, CARICOM. And uh, Cura Cow, the agreement was signed by the CARICOM chairman, Dicon Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada, and Gilmer Simon Pesas, Prime Minister of Cura Gao. During the 47th general regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government in St. George, Grenada. Okay, so remember that. CARICOW now consists of 15 full members countries and 6 associated members. CURACOW is committed to supporting various initiatives within CARICOM including renewable energy, new forms of agriculture and climate resilience. So remember CURACOW has joined the, as the 6th associated member of CARICOM. <coughs> Kotec Mahindra Bank and uh, GOQE launch smartwatch for contactless payment. So we have so far come by doing payments with our phone and now the contactless payment is coming that is uh, with the help of Kotec Mahindra and Geo QI. So on 1st of August Kotec Mahindra partnered with Geo QI to launch the Kotec Geo QI Smart Vital Plus Smartwatch. The smartwatch enables contactless payment and monitor health parameters. So two things are under it. One is contactless payment and another one is uh, the health parameters. It is priced at Rs. 3499 and recognized as the medical device by the Central Drug and Standard Control Organization. The smartwatch allows seamless transaction up to Rs. 5000 without a PIN and has a daily purchase limit of Rs. 1 lakh for e-commerce transaction. It also tracks oxygen level, body temperature and blood pressure directly from the wrist. Okay, so basically it helps in two things. One is telling you about your health care and the other thing it is doing is it is particularly providing contactless transactions to the people. So remember Kotec Mahindra is in touch with GeoQI for this purpose. RBL launched Rupe credit card with UPI and NCMC feature. So RBL Bank has launched the uh, new Rupee credit card integrated with unified payment interface and national common uh, mobility card features. RBL becomes the first private sector bank 
to offer these comprehensive payment capabilities in a single card. The integration allows credit card holders to make instant and secure payments through UPI and travel hustle free with NCMC features. Rupe card network vast acceptance uh, enhances the utility and usability of these card across various platforms and services. So remember RBL they have launched a Rupe credit card with UPI and NCMC feature that is the national common mobility card. This card will help you in two things. One is uh, it will work as a credit card on your UPI plus it will help you in tra traveling through different type of transports by just doing the different type of recharge and you can go through any type of transport. IRDAI finds HDFC life rupees 2 crore for violation. So recently insurance regulatory and development authority of India has fined HDFC life insurance for rupees 2 crore. Fine is for breaching regulatory norms during the financial year 2017-2018 to 2019-2020. Penalty must be paid within 45 days as per the order dated 1st of August. Additional directives have been issued to address the violation. So remember IRDAI fines with HDFC Life. RBL Bank launches Rupee Credit Card. We have already completed it. So remember, RBL Bank have come collaborated with Rupee Credit Card and UPI and NCMC, NCMC facilities. Rapido becomes unicorn with fresh 120 million funding. We discussed in the last session as well. So remember, which particular bikes, uh, bike ride service or auto drive service, uh, particularly providing particularly got the status of a unicorn so that is rapido and how much money they have got in funding 120 million dollar so rapido has achieved unicorn status that means it has become 1 billion dollar company with fresh 120 million dollar funding around this funding highlights the rapid growth and potential of the company rapido's valuation has now crossed the 1 billion mark and the investment will be used to expand its services and market reach 14th India Vietnam Defense Policy Dialogue held in New Delhi. So remember the 14th India Vietnam Defense Policy Dialogue took place in New Delhi. Discussion focused on strengthening bilateral defense cooperation. So India and Vietnam they are collaboratively working in making a complex in a museum complex at uh, Lothal in Gujarat. And now they are particularly also collaborating to create bilateral defense cooperation. New cooperation areas such as cyber security, military medicine were explored. A letter of intent was signed to enhance training exchanges. So this has all been done under this particular dialogue held between India and Vietnam. And remember, uh, the particular complex, the Lothal complex is being built by India and Vietnam collaboratively in Gujarat. Okay. INS Tabar completes MPX with Russian ship. Subra Zetnili, INS Tabar, Indian Navy frontline frigate, arrived in St. Petersburg, Russia on July 25. The visit <coughs> was to participate in the 328th Russian Navy Day parade celebration. So, INS Tabar, remember which particular shipment or which particular vessel participated in the 328th Russian Navy Day celebration, that is INS Tabar. And uh, the visit was participated in the 328 Russian Navy Day. This was the 328 Russian Navy Day. The event aimed to strengthen maritime cooperation between India and Russia. The interaction underscores the long-standing friendship between the two nations. So remember which vessel has participated. It is INS Tabar. SWIFT partnered with Axis Bank to launch AI pilot to tackle payment fraud. So what has happened recently? Let's see. So Swift has partnered with Axis Bank to launch an AI driven plot to prevent payment fraud in cross border payments. So first of all, you need to know that what is Swift. So Swift is a type of a function that is being used to transfer money from our bank for an international payment. Okay. So they have collaboratively doing with Axis Bank to launch an AI driven pilot to drive, prevent payment frauds. The initiative involves global banks like BNY Milan, Deutsche Bank, DNB, HSBC, Intesa, San Paolo and Standard Bank. 
the pilot uses ai algorithm to examine historical transaction data and detect anomalies indicating fraud it aims to refine the model for wider application across swift network the ai driven plot will provide improved monitoring and reporting of fraud enabling real time transaction tracking and detailing reporting so all this will be done under this particular collaboration paytm launches india's first nfc card sound box so paytm parent company 197 communication limited remember it could come into your exam launched india's first near field communication card sound box wow, what is it what is it the device combines nfc card payment technology with the mobile qr payments providing cost effective solution for offline merchants it features instant audio confirmation display screen for transaction amount battery life of up to 10 days okay so it is a kind of a new type of sound box that is being provided as the india's first nfc sound box merchants can accept nfc based uh, debit and credit cards and receive mobile payments from you any upi app with the digit single device paytm sound box support notification in 11 languages offer various device models to meet the demands of the offline merchants okay so remember that paytm is now coming once again into the market its parent company is 197 communication limited and now they have launched the india's first nfc card sound box thales and garud aerospace signed mou to secure drone operations in india So Thales and Garud Aerospace they have signed a memorandum to advance the growth and innovation in India drone ecosystem the ecosystem that is being developed over the years now for that purpose Thales and Garud Aerospace are particularly collaborating with the in the growth and innovation of the drone system the collaboration aims to foster innovation and develop technological solution for safe and secure drone operations Thales will provide expertise in unmanned traffic management solution radar and sensor for high performance uav detection Garud Aerospace will bring skills in the manufacture and use of uavs focusing advanced drone solution for various sectors MOU aligns with Atmanirbhar Bharat vision aiming to make India a global hub for drones by 2030 so all this is being done under the atmanirbhar bharat vision and india to become the global hub for drones and for that purpose garud aerospace will bring its skill into the being pwc india partners with microsoft india to strengthen cyber security pwc india has partnered with microsoft india and this partnership uses microsoft copilot for security and ai powered security tool to leverage microsoft data and threat intelligence okay so as you know that pwc is a co commercial is a commerce and uh, information company and they need to secure their data and for that purpose they are collaborating with microsoft india it enhances pwc capabilities in secure system rebuilding and broader incident management collaboration reduces incident response time and processes large volumes of data quickly to improve overall security it enables customers to predict prevent and respond to the security threats with confidence so remember pwc is partnering with microsoft india china to build world's first thorium molten salt npp in gobi desert so very important guys remember china is going to plan the world's first nuclear power plant fueled by molten thorium salt so it is the first of its kind that is going to be fueled by molten thorium salt because earlier all the type of nuclear plants are being fueled by uranium 235 236 or 238 the energy used is liquid salt and carbon dioxide for heat transfer and electricity generation eliminating the need for water cooling so now this particular type of uh, power plant will not require any water cooling substance to cool down the reactor it will use fuel enriched with less than 20% uranium 235 and approximately 50 kg of thorium okay so this particular thing will also create more efficiency with less amount of fuel used 
The reactor is scheduled to be operational in 2029, generating heat at maximum power of 60 megawatts. So remember that China is going to build the first thorium molten salt NPP, that is the nuclear power plant. India select crew for Axiom 4 mission to ISS. So India has selected two astronauts to upcoming Axiom 4 mission to the International Space Station. Group Captain Subhanshu Shukla and Group Captain Prashant Balakrishnan Nair will represent India. The mission strengthens human space flight cooperation between ISRO and NASA. It also advances India's own human space program that is the Gagan Yan. So, particularly India has selected two particular uh, Air Force officers and they are going to be the part of this particular mission that is the Axiom. Four. Remember the name Group Captain Subhanshu and Group Captain Prashant. Lieutenant Colonel Kabilan Sai Ashok, India's youngest boxing referee at Olympics. So, Lieutenant Colonel Kabilan Sai Ashok is going to become the youngest Olympic referee in boxing from India. He is officiating at the Paris Olympics 2024. This achievement reflects his dedication, professionalism, and integrity. Lieutenant Colonel Ashok embodies the high standards of the Indian Army. So, the recent Olympics uh, that are going to be held in Paris, that is going to see Lieutenant Colonel Kabilan Sai Ashok as the youngest referee at Olympics. So, another one. So, now we are going to discuss about the important days. Earth Overshoot Day 2024. August 1. Earth Overshoot Day 2024 marks the date when humanity's demand for ecological resources exceeds Earth's capacity to regenerate for the year. So, this particular day is marked on 1st of August. 1st of August is also commemorated as the World Lung Cancer Day. I hope you remember that. 2024 Earth Overshoot Day falls on 1st of August, indicating that humanity uses nature 1.7 times faster than the ecosystem can regenerate. So, this is very important, guys. We need to discuss about it because we are using approximately two times of the resources that the Earth can develop by itself. Okay, the resources that it can regenerate. So, that you can easily see that if you let me give you an example. So, if you have uh, two rotis or two chapatis uh, to eat in a day and you have to eat two chapatis in whole day one at morning one at evening but in morning you are so much hungry that you eat both the two chapatis sing at a single time now in evening you can't have another one so what you can do you can do nothing you have to starve for another day so that you can get two more chapatis for that day Okay, so that example can directly give you the thing that what is Earth Overshoot Day. So we are using 1.7 times of resources that Earth can generate in a year. Okay, so that is called Earth Overshoot Day. The day is hosted and calculated by Global Footprint Network, International Sustainability Research Organization. First world, uh, first Earth Overshoot Day was calculated on 25th December 1971. Idea of EOD was first suggested by Andrew Sims to the UK's New Economic Foundation, which partnered with the Global Footprint Network in 2006. So remember, Earth Overshoot Day is on 1st of August. World Breastfeeding Week, 1st to 7th of August. So World Breastfeeding Week is celebrated annually from 1st to 7th of August to raise awareness about the importance of breastfeeding. The 2024 theme is Closing the Gap. Breastfeeding support for all. Remember this. WBW was first observed in 1992. The World Alliance for Breastfeeding Action coordinates the annual WBW campaign. Remember one more thing. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is October. Okay. Just collaborative with it. Remember that as well. And World Breastfeeding Week is on 1st to 7th of August. Another one. World Wide Web Day, 1st of August. So, World Wide Web Day is observed annually on 1st of August and celebrate the creation and impact of the WWW. The day highlights Web's role in revolutionizing communication, collaboration and access to knowledge. So, just try to think your world without internet in today's day when you have so much dependency on it. 
and uh, that is why this particular www this particular world wide web has been dedicated this particular day the 1st of august world wide web was invented by sir tim berners lee remember this name in 1989 while the while he was employed at cern in geneva switzerland the world's first website info.cern.ch went live on 6th of august 1991 the world wide web consortium and world wide web foundation were established to advance the open web as a public good and basic right national friendship day 2024 so national friendship day is basically commemorated on 4th of august and world uh, the day that is dedicated to friendship by the un is being organized in july so remember that thing as well so tradition of observing it on first sunday of august continues the day this day allows friends to come together over the weekend friendship day is global celebration of one's or uh, one of life's most cherished relationship so remember the first sunday of august is celebrated as national friendship day India ranked 39 in the Travel and Tourism Development Index. So, World Economic Forum released its Travel and Tourism Development Index for the year 2024. India has secured 39th position among 109 countries in 2024. So, remember, in Travel and Tourism, India has got this position 39. Last year, in Global Innovation Index, India got the position of 40th. Remember that. Index evaluates competitiveness and sustainability of the tourism sector worldwide. This ranking reflects India's overall performance across various tourism indicators. So remember that India's ranking in this particular index is 39th. <clears throat> 46th World Heritage Committee meeting held in New Delhi. Uh, India has tried 26 new heritage sites. So, 46th session of the UNESCO World Heritage Committee was held in New Delhi for the first time at the Bharat Mandapam in New Delhi. The session inscribed 26 new World Heritage sites, including 19 cultural, 4 natural, 1 mixed property, along with 2 modif uh, significant modification to existing boundaries. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced USD 1 million grant to the UNESCO World Heritage Center. to support capacity building technical assistance and conservation of the world site let me add one more thing to it india recently has also seen three more unesco world heritage sites to be added into the list one is the shanti niketan in kolkata another one is the hosiala temple in karnatak and another one are the famous uh, burial grounds in assam okay so these three are added and now the total number of unesco world heritage sites are 43 The government of India and USA signed the first ever cultural property agreement to prevent and curb the illicit trafficking of antiquities from India to the USA. Union Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat inaugurated Humayun's Tomb, World's Heritage Site Museum in New Delhi. So remember that uh, the Union Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat inaugurated Humayun's Tomb, World's Heritage Site Museum also in New Delhi. Another one, Ministry of Ayush and WHO signed USD 85 million dollar donor dollar agreement for GTMC in Gujarat. So recently, Ministry of Ayush and WHO they have signed a donor agreement in Geneva, Switzerland, which means the this is a kind of a donation thing that is being done. MOU was signed by H. E. Arindam Bakchi, permanent representative of India in UN, and Dr. Bruce Elward, Assistant Director General of universal health coverage and life course at wh this agreement is a part of the usd 250 million investment from india to support the establishment of who global traditional medicine center in jamnagar so india is going to build a global traditional medicine center in jamnagar as earlier we also discussed that india has been in collaboration to developing that and for that purpose in the usd 250 million investment is required okay and that is being done by india India will donate 85 billion USD uh, over 10 years to support the operations of the WHO GTMC. So that is being done, and India is going to donate USD uh, 85 million over 10 years in the next 10 years. 
GDMC aims to be very knowledgeable hub for evidence based traditional complementary and integrative medicine because this is required this is the requirement of time as we can see all over the world the organic things are in requirement and for that purpose also traditional medicines should also be encouraged and for that purpose remember where is this GTMC center is being inaugurated it is being inaugurated in Jamnagar also the world largest refinery is also in Jamnagar President Draupadi Murmu inaugurates Governor's Conference. So on 2nd of August, President Draupadi Murmu inaugurated significant two-day conference of governors at Rashtrapati Bhavan, New Delhi. The conference focuses on various issues crucial for shaping center-state relations, discussing aims to advance welfare schemes and improve governance. So basically, as you know that the president is responsible for appointing the governors and for that purpose, this particular conference was held. And uh, the focus was to create more uh, better center and state relations. The event underscores the importance of collaborative efforts between the central and the state government. So remember this as well. CWC won GEEF Global Water Tech Award 2024 for water management. So Center Water Commission has been awarded GEEF Global Water Tech Award under the category Water Department of the Year. So remember that uh, Central Water Commission, they have been awarded the GEEF Global Water Tech Award. Their role in hydro -elect -mat 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 meteorological data collection, flood, flood forecasting, reservoir storage and water quality monitoring. CWC innovative initiatives such as urban hydrology capacity building and the flood watch India app were also acknowledged. The award demonstrates CWC commitment to excellence and ongoing effort to advance water technology resource management. So their work, what they are doing in the field of water management resources and all that, they have been given this award. ZIF Global Water Tech Award Owner Achievements in the Water Sector Focusing on Innovation, Technology, Conservation and Sustainable Development. That is quite clear from the whole news. Dr. Grinson George appointed Director of ICAR CMFRI. Remember the name Grinson George. He has been appointed as the Director of ICAR Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute. This institute is dedicated to the research purpose of fisheries. He previously led the Marine Biodiversity and Environment Managing Division, Management Division at CMFRI. Dr. George also served as the Senior Program Specialist at SARC in Dhaka. His extensive experience is expected to bring significant advancement to CMFRI. RBI reapproves MDs and CEOs for small financial banks. So, Reserve Bank of India, they have reapproved the appointments of Indrajit, Kamotra and Govind Singh. Indrajit Kamotra will continue as MD and CEO of Unity Small Finance Bank. So, a new appointment of a new MD and CEO of a small finance bank, Unity Small Finance Bank, that is Indrajit Kamotra, has been approved by RBI because RBI is the highest regulatory authority of banks in India. Their leadership has been instrumental in expanding their bank's operations and reach. At last, let's summarize. So, highlights of visit of David Lamy MP, UK Foreign Secretary to India. Kura Kao joins as the sixth associate member of CARICOM. Kotec Mahindra Bank and GeoQE launch smartwatch for contactless payment. RBL launched Rupee credit card with UPI and NCMC features. IRDAI fines SDFC life rupees 2 crore for violations. RBL Bank launches Rupee credit card with UPI and NCMC functionalities. Rapido becomes unicorn with fresh 120 million funding. 14th India Vietnam Defense Policy Dialogue held in New Delhi. INS Tabar complete MPX with Russian ship. SWIFT partners with Axis Bank to launch AI pilot to tackle payment fraud. Paytm launches India's first NFC card sound box. Thales and Garud Aerospace sign MOU to secure drone operations in India. PwC India partners with Microsoft India. 
China to build world's first thorium molten salt NPP. India selects crew for Axiom formation from the Indian Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Kabilan Sai Ashok, India's youngest boxy referee at Olympics. Earth Overshoot Day 2024 on August 1. World Breast Feeding Week 2024, 1st to 7th of August. World Wide Web Day, 1st of August. National Friendship Day, 1st Sunday of August. India ranked 39 in Travel and Tourism Development Index. 46th World Heritage Committee meeting held in New Delhi by UNESCO. Ministry of IUS and WHO signed USD 85 million dollar agreement for a traditional center in Jamnagar, Gujarat. President Draupadi Murmu inaugurates Governor Conference. CWC won GWF Global Water Tech Award 2024 for Water Management. Dr. Grinson George appoints Director of ICAR CMFRI. RBI reapproves MDs and CEO for Small Finance Bank. And that's it in this particular session. I hope you all enjoyed the session. And very thank you for being with me in this session. We'll meet in the next session. Till then, bye-bye. Take care, everyone. And see you soon.